Hello, it's Cliff here. Welcome to my channel, Compact Camper Van. In New Zealand, it's really worth getting a self-containment certificate for your camper van. So in this video, I'll show you a few tips and tricks to make it easy to build your van so that it qualifies for a self-containment certificate and what's involved in actually getting that certificate. There's a lot of research that needs to be done and I hope this video will save you a lot of time. Cheers. Well, here we are at Halmoana Domain. And this is a camper van park for self-contained vehicles only. Maximum of two nights stay, no freedom casual camping permitted, certified self-containment vehicles only. And there are hundreds of these all over New Zealand. Let's have a look on the uh, Rankers New Zealand camping app. Let's go to just self-contained vehicles. Over the size of New Zealand, there are hundreds of these parks. Let's zoom in on the area we're in, in the Napier area. So you can see here, free camper van parks in this vicinity. There's uh, five or six. We're currently staying in Halmoana. And, um, if you zoom in close enough, you can see uh, the directions of how to get there. So um, it's a really good facility put on by the local councils. We're currently staying in Halmoana here. And um, it's a big park-like camper van park with lots of space. And uh, most people treat it with respect and keep noise levels down. Unfortunately, there's still one or two inconsiderate and lazy people who foul it up for everybody else. One thing I learned with our test trip away was that it would be really nice to have self-containment compliance. And um, I, I, I didn't bother with it on the first trip, but I soon learned that it would be an advantage for us camping in a remote area and freedom camping in the various freedom camping spots. So I decided I would uh, try and learn the regulations and build the self-compliance equipment and then get it tested. And yesterday I got it inspected and got it certified. Um, so I'll just go over it very briefly now what's involved to help you cons who are considering it and then I'll go into it more uh, in more detail later on. So first of all, an, an overview, you have to have a few fairly simple basic things. You have to have a sink and some sort of a way of, of putting water into it. For example, this little pump action tap. You need to have a, at least 24 liters of fresh water and some sort of tank. You need to have at least 24 liters of gray water, waste water in some sort of tank. You need to have a, a trap to stop uh, smells from getting out of that wastewater ta tank and you need to have a vent from it to the outside of the vehicle. And you need to have a rubbish bin and a, for example, a portable toilet. Now they're the main requirements for a camper van to get a self-containment certificate. But you can't just do approximately that. You need to understand the regulations in detail and um, make sure you comply, otherwise you'll fail in the certificate. And the certificate costs around about $80 for the inspection certificate and about another $40 for the processing and getting sent out the stickers and so on. So. Um, that's the overview, but you know, it took me a long time reading several websites and studying the different details and buying the materials. It always takes a long time to do it the first time. Now I could do it again in a few hours, but the first time takes ages. And so I'll try and make this video so that it saves you time. So I'll go into the details later on and explain uh, how you can do it quickly and easily. It is only a few hours work, but you need to understand the regulations. Here's a self-containment certificate, obviously with the details blocked out. Um, and that costs about $80 to get the inspection by a qualified 
uh, inspector and then this took me a while to get to the bottom of there's two main issuing authorities there's all points camping and New Zealand lifestyle camping I think they're both the same organization or different divisions of the same organization they have a website and there's also NZMCA New Zealand Motor Caravan Association and they have a website so if you look at those websites you can decide which one suits you best you may want to join one of them there's relative merits in one and the other or you can just get them to do the processing and you pay a higher fee than if you are a member so it's worth considering if you want to join one or the other first and um, so the cost to get yourself compliance you know going through the plumbing fittings and the water bottles and bits and pieces you're probably looking at about hundred and fifty dollars for the materials and uh, a few hours work if you if you can follow the details and uh, if you need to buy a porta potty they're between one and two hundred dollars depending on the model you get so you can see that and the certification there's a few hundred dollars involved um, you know you want to be pretty serious about camping freedom camping long term in New Zealand before you would bother to get a self-containment certificate so what the issuing authorities do is take the certificate and link it up with the, the uh, presume the government records of your motor vehicle um, and send you the stickers and here's the actual sticker to put on the rear and the certification card to put on the windscreen that arrived about two days after getting the inspection so you know just briefly um, the advantages of being self-contained is that you can stay at the free camping spots that are designated for self-contained vehicles and there's several hundred around New Zealand uh, where there'll be a little sign saying for self-contained vehicles only and if you stay there in a non-self-contained vehicle you run the risk of somebody dobbing you in or an inspector randomly turning up and giving you a spot fine of $200 and although that's quite unlikely to happen it's not a nice feeling to, to, to be worried about that in the back of your mind and sort of looking out to the corner of your eyes all the time so um, you know I, I think if you're in New Zealand for a decent length period of time and you like um, uh, budget camping and staying overnight at low cost situations um, then it's probably worth considering. Um, it also means that you can stay in remote areas that aren't designated for camping at all, you know, dock land and public land. There's many areas where you can legally free camp if you have a self-contained vehicle. Of course, this varies from district to district and council regulation to council regulation. But if there's no sign saying uh, no camping allowed, then I, I imagine it would be unlikely that you would be fined for camping there but you've also got to consider the safety aspect of it if you're in a remote area and you're the only person staying for the night you know every now and again some pretty horrendous episodes happen uh, with somebody high on pee uh, arriving in the middle of the night with a shotgun or uh, something like that and uh, you do run a small risk you know one in one in a million risk that something like that could happen by staying in a remote area on your own. Okay, so going in, into it in more detail, um, for a camper van in New Zealand you must have at least 24 litres of fresh water and that's not an easy thing to get, a container like that, and 24 litres of wastewater. I eventually found after hours of searching that I could get them at Burnsco, but it, they were too tall, and Super Cheap Auto is where I bought these 25 litre can Containers and they are tanks and they are about $45 each they're not cheap heavy-duty Australian made containers and they didn't quite fit in my cabinet and I'm going to have to redesign it slightly but I think it's worth it to have the ability to be self-contained so um, there's quite a weight I don't really want to have 24 liters of each I don't need that we don't need that much but that's the regulations so I've got a ratchet tie down there to hold them in place because when they're full of water they're quite heavy. So they need to be secured, that's part of the regulations by one means or another. You need to have a sink 
it's not specified as long as there's a sink you need to have it draining into the waste tank with something like so actually if I take this out this is removable with shelf if I take it out we can see it better you can see I've got an S bend there and that provides a pool of water in the S bend which blocks the uh, gases or smells from coming out of the container and that is also critical you need to have a vent like a 10 millimeter plastic tube which connects can you see it in there oh, I'm trying to fit the camera in there see it in there how it's connected it's got a little uh, bayonet fitting and a couple of nuts drill the hole through the top of the container and fitted a tube over that bayonet fitting. Now that's a vent and that vent tube, this took me a long time to get to the bottom of, must come out of the top of the waste container, grey water container and come up high above the level of the container and above the level of the top of the water that might be in the sink and then come back down to the outside of the van in some way. So coming down here through the step of the van, there's the step of the van, down through there and out underneath the van. So I had to drill a hole in the floor of the van to do that. And that this is all checked by the inspector, you know, they look at it pretty closely. Um, a connection there for the uh, fresh water coming up and a little vent to let air in as the water is taken out. That's not so critical, they're not so fussy about that, they're really fussy about the grey water waste tank. So make sure you get that right. Um, a rubbish tin is not critical, it needs to have a lid on it and the toilet capacity needs to be at least six litres holding capacity, waste holding capacity, six litres for two people. So most toilets have more than enough capacity. This is the little, uh, what's it called? Thetford Portaloo Porta Potty 145. So um, I passed this test without any criticism, so it was obviously fine. So. If you want to save yourself a lot of time, have a close look at this. And um, I just spent hours researching it. You know, because one website focuses on one detail and another website on another detail. There's all points camping and uh, New Zealand motor caravans, uh, whatever it's called, website, and they detail it all. And then the New Zealand. Uh, government authorities detail it all and they're all slightly different versions you know and so it's really hard to cross reference them and get all the detailed information and you can speak to the suppliers for example Burnsco or uh, RV World or RV Dreams and you'll get more information slightly different again and so you've got to read between the lines and it's quite a, a business once you've figured out how to do it the second time would only take a few hours so hopefully this will help you to do that so get all that carefully laid out and um, find your inspection uh, person who's listed uh, on these websites for example all points camping I think lists uh, inspectors in your area um, who's is a qualified plumber or a qualified inspector who um, you need to pay about $80 to inspect it and give you the written certificate. You then scan or photograph and send that certificate to one of these two authorities, uh, New Zealand Motor Caravans Association or All Points Camping, also called Lifestyle Camping, and they will process it and send you back your sticker. Okay, carrying on with the details. So, um, you can get a uh, basic cheap stainless steel bowl from your supermarket for uh, $10 or so. You can punch a hole in the bottom and if you go to a uh, RV supply store you can buy these special plastic bayonet fittings which with nuts that you can use to connect the uh, 
sink the, the stainless steel bowl to a, a special piece of flexible corrugated tubing that you can buy by the meter. In this case I only needed um, you know a foot or so, less than that probably. Um, and then the same for the cap. Here we are. You just drill a hole in the top of the cap and fit one of these bayonet fittings, plastic fitting. It screws in there. That's the right size to suit that piece of corrugated tubing. And you can buy a quick connection uh, plugs that sort of plug on and off. I'm trying to do this with one hand while I'm talking without letting the water out. Um, but I just slip it on and off when I want to fill or empty rather the waste container. Um, they've got a corrugated spiral inside them, um, a little bit of a groove so I smeared silicon in there uh, and let it go off overnight so that it seals otherwise it will slowly drip out water so it's now a smooth bore and it doesn't have a spiral groove in it but it's nice and flexible and it does the job well didn't seem to be any problems with doing that for the compliance so that's the key part the plumbing connections from the sink to the waste holding tank and the vent which I just spoke about earlier uh, the fresh water set up there it's pretty simple, you've just got a tube running down through a hole in the cap going down to the bottom of the tank that allows you to draw out the fresh water and you could have a simple little tube to let air in or you could have a bit of clearance around that hole to let air in but that might slop out a few drops of water on a bumpy road so I've got a little raised tube there, you can see that there and a, a ratchet tie down or some heavy duty bungee cords to hold it in place is probably wise. If you're interested in this van that you've seen in the background while I'm doing this video, have a look at the introduction. I'm just doing a general introduction. I may put together a series of how, how to build this type of compact camper van. Um, so let me know in the comments below. Well, hello, it's Cliff here. And welcome to my channel, Compact Camper Van. Um, I am an industrial designer by background, and I thought about building this very compact, quick and easy, low-cost build camper van for quite a while. And I wrote down what my design goals were. And just briefly, I wanted this van to be multi-purpose, compact, a quick and easy build, affordable but reliable, styling that I liked, and a very resolved design. So just going into those individually, when I say multi-purpose or versatile, I wanted it obviously to be a, a capable camper van, but I also wanted it to be a, an activity van, so we could have our bikes in the back, so we could have a garage in the back, and uh, I wanted it to be good for carrying backpacking gear. Well here we are on the beautiful Coromandel Peninsula, testing the compact camper bike van. Hi Dan. Let's have a wee look in the back. So this is in the travelling mode. So we've got the table down and the bikes in the back. And also a good transporter van so that I could carry building materials, a big sheet of 2.4 by 1.2 ply in the back and that type of thing. So I wanted this van design to be multi-purpose. I needed it to be quickly reverted back into a basic transporter van. And so in less than a minute, I can slide out the table, drop the squabs down, and I can go and pick up a piece of standard size 2.4 by 1.2 meter construction timber. I wanted it to be a nice vehicle to drive as my car. Nice parking, nice handling, uh, compact and uh, good on fuel. Toyota Hiace 2014. If you're coming to New Zealand and you're wondering what sort of van to get, in New Zealand the Toyota Hiace would make up about 80 or 90 percent of the market. It's the number one tradesman's van and small camper van because they're just so rock-solid reliable 
and they're nice to drive and quite good on gas. This is a two litre petrol version and um, I get about 10.4 litres per hundred kilometres. So, so that is a big ask, you know, that's difficult design goals. I went for the smaller version, not the jumbo, but the low top because as you can see I, I'm six foot tall but I can sit down in it. Because it's small, I can easily maneuver around a small area providing I designed it so that everything was within reach of the small area. So I'll just take you quickly through it now. And this might be something you're interested in, a compact, low cost camper van, versatile. And if it is, let me know in the comments below because I could do a series of videos. I've taken clips of the build explaining it's design and construction. So the construction is very simple. It's just about four different cabinets. So there's the normal bench seat arrangement with a table that drops down to form the bed. But the difference with this is that the bench seats are not as long as normal. So they can be extended to make the six foot length required either extended out the back so let's look inside the camper van at night time when we don't have the bikes with us or the bikes are outside or extended out the front. If, there, if there's bikes or activity gear in the back like uh, backpacking gear or bikes and so on, then that area of the van is used up with storage for the bikes and so on and the bed is extended out the front with an extension board and um, otherwise the bed is extended out the back and it's much more roomy in here. So let's just have a look in here. So really having a low ceiling is not such a problem if you're not moving around into different areas. So I'm just sitting here in one of two positions, one of three positions if you include the toilet. Um, we've got the kitchen cabinet there, the two bench seats, this wall cabinet here for storing bedding and toiletries and so on. So it's a very simple, quick and easy build, just using a high ace passenger van as the basis. I'll just come around the back of the van and show you it looking the other way. This is Lake Tutira in the central North Island. Okay, so this is a sort of luxury mode for us where we don't have our e-bikes in the back or our tramping packs in the back. I've got room for my guitar and there's plenty of space here. We've got two boxes which uh, form seats and storage boxes and also the base for the extension piece if uh, we're putting it out the back. And this is looking the other way, set up at night time. So we've got the pigeonhole cabinet for our linen and toiletries and things. And what's that? Oh, Janice. 